If you've recently got yourself DJI Mini 3 Pro and the RC controller and you're still working out how to use it, then I'm going to take you through all the settings to completely familiarise yourself of how to use this so that you don't have to plough through the manual. Let's dive in and take a look. Work my way, way, way round, work round clockwise. I'm going to start the top. <laughs> I'm going, to start the, I'm going to start in the top left corner and work my way around clockwise and go through all the settings. First of all though, I'm going to swipe down from the top to expose some settings there. So let's just have a look at that first. You pull down twice and straight away you've got on the left notifications. At the moment it's saying screen record and if there's any other notifications you've got through the DJI app, they'll show up there. I'm screen recording now and as you can see in the center lower down there's the screen record button you can just tap that and you'll be recording your screen. Along the top row starting on the left you've got the Wi-Fi if you just touch that it'll turn on if it's not connected to anything you hold your finger down it'll open up your Wi-Fi connections and then you can select what you want it to connect to. It's good if you set up in advance that you've got your mobile hotspot in there so that when you're out on location and you want to move your return to home uh, spot, it can do that. Or if you want any to activate any unlock codes, you can do that. Otherwise, you'll probably have it connected to your home Wi-Fi for when you set this up. Uh, and then you've got the Bluetooth. And again, you can Bluetooth it to your phone. You hold your finger down that will open up your Bluetooth settings and you can pair it with your phone. You've got airplane mode, mute, uh, you can take screenshots here and then there's just screen brightness and volumes on the bottom right hand side. Starting at the top left hand side we've got the arrow, if you touch the arrow that will take us out of the fly screen. You'll want to be using the profile which is in the centre bottom and if we click on that you can see it opens up some more options. A couple of ones to really note here is the top is device management. If you click on that, you'll notice here you've got your aircraft SN number. If you want to get any unlock codes, authorization codes, because you're an air traffic zone and you want to fly, you'll need an unlock code. You'll need to set that up through the DJI website, which we'll be covering in the next video. Then if we go down to settings, we'll click on settings. The important thing to note here is if we scroll down on the left hand side, you can see it says unlock geo zone. So again, that's key to know where that is for when you're setting these up to fly in a geo zone. And in the top left side, you'll notice it'll say end mode. It defaults to that. Yes, it's the normal mode, indicated with these um, selector in the center of your controller where you've got cine mode, normal mode and sports mode. You might already have it in cine mode, but it'll default here for takeoff into the normal mode. That's uh, quite normal and that's how it should be. And as soon as you're in flight, it will go back to the cine mode if that's what you've set it in. And it defaults to the normal mode to make sure you don't go into the sports mode or take off in the sports mode because you won't have any uh, obstacle avoidance working in sports mode. So it's just a caution. Next along the top, it will say whether you've got your GPS um, connections or not. And at the moment it's saying no GPS, so take off with caution. And then we've got our flight time, how long we've got left on the batteries until we need to return home. Then next along we've got the strength of the RC connection to the drone and as you can see we've got full strength here and then it's showing us um, the satellites, the signal of the GPS. So at the moment we've got zero satellites and a very weak GPS signal. Next along we've got the three dots in the top right hand corner uh, and this is where we go into our, our main menu and on the top left we've got the safety and this is where you can see you can choose what you want the obstacle avoidance to do, whether it's going to come to an object and just go around it and continue, or whether it comes to an object and just break, or whether you just turn it off, which you might want if you're purposely flying through a small space and you don't want the drone to stop you from flying through. 
obviously you'd be using this with extreme caution and know exactly what you're doing. Otherwise, leave it on brake or bypass. You've got the display radar map, which will show up in the bottom left-hand corner. And then you can set your maximum altitude and maximum distance here. As standard, they'll be set to 120 meters, which is the legal limit above ground that you can fly a drone. You can turn that off, you could fly higher, um, but you wouldn't be flying um, within the legal limits in most countries. Maximum distance, you can leave that as no limit, but you might want to contain it within a certain zone and then you could set that there and it won't go beyond that. Auto return to home, you can set the altitude so that wherever you fly in your drone, that when the batteries get low, it'll automatically return home, but you set the height you want it to come in at. So I've got this set at 100 meters, which is the default. So it means whatever height the drone is, it will rise up to 100 meters or drop to 100 meters, fly home and land. So that will generally make sure it's missing any buildings or high mountains. Here you can update your home point if you've gone on a cycle ride, the drone's tracking you and you might want to reset your return to home point. You just tap in there, which won't work at the moment because we don't have a GPS connection, and then you just reset your return to home point. You can calibrate your compass, etc. here and look at the battery info and look at unlocking your geo zone. That will take you here. Again, in a later video, we'll talk further about how you do that. Then you've got find my drone. If you lost your drone, it will track it down. And obviously at the moment, we've got no GPS signal, so it won't do that for us. And then at the bottom, we've just got advanced safety settings. And again, we'll be covering that in more detail in a later video. Next along the top, under control, you've got the different units, whether you want them in metric or imperial, and you can do switch on subject scanning, so it'll do that automatically in certain modes. Next down is gain and expo tuning. If you click on here, depending on whether you're a cine normal or sport mode, you can click on these and you can set how you want the drone to respond when you move your controls. So if you want in cine mode, for the actions to be even smoother, then you can change them just here. Next is the gimbal mode, and that's where you can have it in follow me mode or FPV mode. And in follow me mode, the gimbal will stay horizontal with the landscape. And in FPV mode, it will tilt and turn. Then you have stick mode. That's what these controls do. So if you click in here, you can have different custom settings. You can group them into group one, two, three, um, which is mode one, two, three, and you can just click through and change them. Then with the camera, you can choose when you're taking photos, whether it's a four, three or 16, nine image here, and whether you want the histogram on screen or not. An overexposure warning like zebras, which is always really handy and whether you want grid lines or not. So I kind of like the standard rule of thirds, so I tend to put those on, I find that quite helpful. And then you can adjust your white balance whether it's auto or manual, and settings for the SD card and the cache, and the maximum video cache capacity. Coming over to transmission. This you don't really need to touch, this will just work automatically. So next, coming down the right hand side, you can click little symbol that looks like a roll of film and that'll pop out your video functions and your photo functions you can have normal mode slow motion mode photo video function here and master shots quick shots Then the top button is the photo button where you can do multiple so shots or single shots. And then below that will be to play back any footage that you've recorded. Just to the left of that is where you can turn your gimbal into portrait mode and you can zoom in, zoom out and autofocus or manual focus. When you're in manual focus, then we get the 
focus peaking will show. Dropping down here into the bottom right hand corner, it says auto, if we touch on that, that brings up our manual settings, it's gone into manual. And then we can click into the functions here. As you can see in the photo mode, it's shooting JPEG and RAW under the 4.3. So we could have it on a 16 by nine. It shows me how much I've got left on the card here. And I can play around with the white balance if I take it off of auto. Then further along here, I've got the ISO and that's in auto. As you can see, the shutter's in auto and you can see the exposure is underexposed as it stands at the moment because we're in manual mode. So if we switch over to video mode, and then I come down to these settings. I'm on auto, so at 1080p, at 30 frames a second by default. I click into the auto. I can then again select auto or manual white balance, whether I want 1080p, 2.7K, 4K, and then how many frames per second I want, 24, 25, 30, 48 and whether I want it to record in DC Link or in normal color formatting. So although I'm in manual mode, I can have the ISO still in auto. So you've just got more control here. In my experience, the auto has been working really well in conjunction with the auto exposure lock. So use the, use the auto exposure function and when it's looking really great on your screen and you're doing a fly around, lock in your exposure, do your flight, and then you can take it out of auto exposure lock. And then moving into the bottom left hand corner, we've got the distance in meters, the drone's flight, and the height in meters the drone is at. And then we've got the small box here on the left hand side that if we give it one click, it expands out and it's showing the map view. We can click it again and it goes to full screen and it will show the camera view is now in the bottom left hand corner. And we've got different functions now where we can do satellite overview, where we can do satellite overlay. We can orientate ourselves to the way the drone's pointing or to north south and bring up information on restricted zones. And then this box, we can click the very bottom right hand corner and it will give us like the compass view, which is actually really handy I find when you're flying to really orientate yourself, whether the drone's moving away from you, towards you, when you've temporarily lost sight of it. And then on the far left hand side, as I'm sure you're aware now, is the automatic takeoff mode. You click that, the pop-out box, you hold your finger down on it. As soon as you release your finger, your drone will take off to 1.2 meters. When you want it to return home, you can do the same. It'll show you return to home, you hold it down, you take a finger off, your drone will return to home. And there you have it, a complete overview of all the settings of the DJI Mini 3 Pro RC controller. I hope you're now much more familiar with how this works and all the features. And if there's anything you're unsure about, drop a message in the comments below. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.